How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So I had to do some digging because I have never heard about this. So do your own digging, draw your own conclusions. I just think things are a lot more complicated than people make them out to be. So we'll start off. You're like, why do I have this on the screen here? Okay, so Morgan at Highland Cycles posted this. Say no to thread of the locker made by a guy who hates dirt bikes, Loctite. We'll get into that. I don't know anything about Stuck Nuts. Actually, I reached out to them. They seem pretty cool. They're going to send me some to try. And they're going to uh, probably buy some for the shop. Because I like supporting small business. And having different options is always good, right? So, whatever your opinion about Loctite at the end of this. Hey, it is what it is. If you want to order it directly from uh, stuck nuts. That's awesome. You can see the everything up here on the screen and you go ahead use Highland Cycles Morgan's uh, Code Highland 10 and save some money and order some and give it a try yourself I'm okay with that because it's a small company. There's always good alternatives to use and You know this video is just going to be digging into this whole Loctite and why do they hate dirt bikes? So, it might be a long video, so sit back, get a drink, and get some popcorn or something. Have a munchie if you want to listen to this. And then, like I said, draw your own conclusions because I think it's very complex <laughs> at the end of the day. So, he posts this, and I'm like, what the heck's this guy do with Rico single track and all that? I, I don't know. Never heard of the guy. So... I reached out to actually Loctite, but this is the email came back and it's okay. I don't care if you see my name, email address, whatever. I, I really don't care. <laughs> um, dear Mark, thank you for emailing Hinkle Corporations, which actually I emailed Loctite. Okay. <laughs> we appreciate your interest in our company. Fritz Hinkle founded Hinkle blah, 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 1876. Today, there is no Mr. Hinkle, as the company is managed by a board of directors and supervisory board, which you can imagine, these big, huge corporations that buy up a bunch of companies, they are owned, or they are managed and directed by boards nowadays, typically. Loctite was purchased by Hinkle Corporation, a German company located in Dusseldorf in 1997. For questions, comments, sir. Suggestions, feel free to contact us, blah, blah, blah. It also looks like they own GE Silicone, too. They own a lot of companies. So if you're trying to protest something, it's never going to hold. You're really, what, spending a few bucks on Lacte isn't going to, it ain't really making them rich for the average Joe. It's not like I'm going through gallons of the stuff, you know. It's just, <laughs> I mean, it's not going to make it, not going to matter at the end of the day. So... This is what I had to say. So the riders that are getting mad and boycotting Loctite because of Christopher Hinkle, the owner of Dunton Hot Springs, has no real connection to Loctite directly or indirectly through the Hinkle Corporation. So that was my question. Directly or indirectly, right? So when I make my video, just so we are clear, Christopher, or I should say Christoph, Christoph Hinkle, <laughs> it's not Christopher, Christoph Hinkle has no say and there shouldn't be any worry. That should have probably been a question mark. Just, just to let you all know, I use Loctite. In fact, I have some in the shop right now that I used this morning to put some e-bikes together. That's actually the truth. I did before I saw all this stuff. <laughs> you know, everyone uses Loctite. I, okay, I didn't even know there was other options. I didn't know there was a problem here. This is the posting on Facebook where the comment you can see it brought up about Christoph Hinkle, 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 <laughs> right? E's are A in German if I remember from living in Austria. I could be wrong. Hinkle. And try and argue in a way to learn more and not just toss lactate under the bus. Yeah. And so I gave him the link. Thank you for... Any information and ed educating myself if indeed there shouldn't be a concern here. Marco Depp. So they respond. 
They've been pretty prompt on responding to, so that's nice. So, Ankle, here's a response. Dear Mark, interesting information and we appreciate you using our products. He may be part of the original founding family and probably still owns shares in Hinkle. However, he is not part of the current managing or supervisory board. And check out their link. So, uh, yeah, and that's what I kind of gathered from a Wikipedia that I think it was 2021 or 2022. He has nothing to do with them, it sounds like, anymore. So I don't know if he sold his stocks or he's just off the corporation as far as say. And like they said, he probably owns some stocks. It's like me owning stocks in IBM or say Disney World or something. Doesn't mean I support what the company is doing. And what the company does doesn't mean that it's my beliefs. You know, it goes both ways. They can't stop somebody from holding shares. And it doesn't mean they support what this is guy is doing with his real estate investments. Because that's where Christoph Hinkle really sounds like he's doing a lot with the, um, he old, holds some uh, real estate investments in the UK, in the Dunton um, Hot Springs in Colorado, and then some properties in California and probably elsewhere too, because he's worth something like $1.5, $1.7 billion. He's going to have real estate investments everywhere and other investments. He got lucky though. He inherited 1 billion, I think it was pounds, from his father. That's a lot of money. So, he just got lucky in life and inherited a bunch of money and some stock in a company. So do you blame Lockte? I don't know. This is what they're going on. This is the Dunton Springs uh, Ranch. In fact, I wish I were saved the little chat. I had a live chat with them. I thought it would stay up, but I guess it expired and went away. But I was just like, hey, I'm looking to, you know, come out and see the area, possibly stay at your accommodations and uh, what type of uh, trail riding is there for dirt bikes in the area? Person came back and said, yeah, we don't allow dirt bikes on the property, but, and I think I, I'm assuming they meant riding on the property, which that's understandable. Uh, but yeah, I'll get back to you with where you can ride. Now they haven't gotten back to me. That could have been quick and easy, so. That could be the anti part, right? Somebody else higher up is like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Yeah, we don't cater to those people. Okay. Uh, you know, whatever. But wasn't nasty. I was hoping they would say something in the chat like, you know, no, nope, we, we just flat out. That would have been nice. That would have made for a good video. But they didn't do that. So, you know, I looked up Christoph Henkel. This one says 1.5 billion. And at this point it does say, but there's no date on this Forbes. I hate these type of articles that don't give you date because stuff on the internet stays live forever. The only date is this real time tracker as of today, but that's a real time tracker. So I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know when this part was written, but here it does say he, he is chairman of Hinkle AG Shareholders Committee. And I did find in, in the Wikipedia, which we'll get to, that I think he's done with that. I don't think he's part of the company anymore. So I think he's doing his own thing now. But apparently he lives in London, citizenship of Germany, and he's married. And he's 65. I mean, 10 more years, he'll be 75. Possibly he'll be gone. <laughs> I mean, okay, there is that, you know. So, let's see. Here's more of the Dunton Hot Springs. Oh, here's my chat right here. Okay, see, it was a different window. <laughs> so, hello from Dunton. Can I answer a question? Is the single track good for the dirt bikes? Hello, I would have to check into that for you. We do not typically allow dirt bikes on the property. However, the team can suggest a location in the area. Seems friendly. I heard Rico was a uh, great place to ride, and as a YouTuber, was thinking of checking it out and the Dutton Hot Springs. I'm, you know, just playing it up like I'm coming out there. I see. If you can provide me your 
email address and stuff, they'll, they'll get back to me. Okay. Gave them that, aka me, Kirk Stream. There's my email here at work. Perfect. I will have someone reach out with additional information. Thank you for stopping by and thinking of Dunton. The scenery is beautiful. I said, thank you. Now, people working there and stuff, that doesn't mean they are opposed to dirt bikes or even believe in what uh, Christoph Henkel believes in. So, well, let's do note that, right? So, you can't blame employees and stuff there. Um, you know, it could be other people on the board and stuff that run this place too. But the, people have said that in the comments on uh, Highland Cycles page that they have come across Christoph Hinkle out there on his e-bike and stuff where he shouldn't be. And I don't know. I guess they've had interactions with the guy. I guess he's, he's, he's a work of art. You know, he's... <laughs> He, I guess he's anti. I, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll maybe touch into more of that, you know. So, just so people know, here's Dunton. Here's Rico over here. So, Dunton Meadows. I think he owns like 175 acres. I, I saw one thing that says 75, but I think that was hectares. I don't know what hectares are. So, I, <laughs> anyways, 175 acres is the last thing I saw. So that's not that much property at the end of the day. Um, my parents own 245 acres in Tennessee. It's about a mile deep, half a mile wide. <laughs> I, so it's not an extreme amount. I mean, I know people that own like 20,000 acres. But yeah, I, okay. <laughs> so for a guy worth billions, he bought this little thing and whatever. And, you know, maybe I'll get into that right now. Why not? Um... I could understand somebody buying a place. They turn into a resort and they're like, you know, we're, we're targeting these high, high rollers, these <laughs> upper middle class to very wealthy people. Cause I think a cabin's like 900 to $2,300 a night, you know, for a lot of us, that would be, you're going to maybe once in a lifetime type thing that's not something you're going to yearly the people that would go something like that yearly are way up there in the income bracket and you know whatever they're they're going to pay it those people might expect different things that's just how it is somebody putting in a business it could be all business he bought the place he should have known about the trails being around there he should have known that there was motorized use but then again, he bought it and then maybe, I'm not saying it's right because it's public lands and the trails were there before he was there and the Forest Service sure told him to go pound sand, but they didn't. <sighs> you know, um, I'm, just, I'm just trying to say that he, I can see from a business standpoint where somebody buys something and they're like, hey, we don't want that trail that borders our property because it's too noisy or whatever. People are getting too close. We're trying to be attract a certain group that will not want paparazzi and that type of stuff to come. I, I guess I get it, right? I get it from a business standpoint, but I also, from a land user, and that this is public land, I also get that, you know, that's not cool. It's like somebody buying by an airport and then complaining about the airplane noise. Well, you should have known there was an airport there. You could see it with your eyes. You could probably hear it when you were looking at the area to invest in. But now you're going to complain about it. I think that is wrong. I mean, people should do their due diligence. I hate people that go out and buy a property and then they, they don't even own the road. But they start putting up a fence and they're trying to claim it. And then they fight with the Forest Service. And the Forest Service is kind of like, uh, you know, do we take on this fight or don't we take on the, the fight? I think the federal government should be a little more stricter with how lawsuits are brought and stuff. And it should be a lot harder probably to sue the federal government. But it's not in our country. I guess some would say that's a pretty good thing because you could sue the federal government and win versus other countries. You could try to sue your government if they don't lock you up and imprison you, they're just going to laugh at you at court and toss it out. 
you know? So, I mean, I guess it is good and it's bad. You know, like everything. There's pros to everything and there's cons to everything. So, their business. What is Hinkle exactly? <laughs> when I don't even know anything about them. Look how big they are. Some Somebody posted up in the comments on Highland Cycles that don't do business with, and they, I think it was just this. They apparently did not click the more because the more keeps on going. You might uh, recognize some of these brands around here, huh? <laughs> Soft Scrub, Surf, Sunlight. You know, I recognize some of these brands and you might recognize more than I do. All these brands, they own. Now, I think that becomes ridiculous when a company can own so many brands. And then how many, what does, like, for example, Snuggle? Snuggle might actually own brands themselves, and then Hinkle buys them, and then they own the brands that they own. You know, how many of that is that? You know, that you find out, like, Dial owns this, this, and this, and then Hinkle bought Dial, so thus they own all that. Um, and it's just not listed here because it's not directly, it's indirectly going to Hinkle. So it's a huge corporation, huge corporation, obviously with a ton of money. So, I mean, I guess that's what everyone strives for, for becoming wealthy. You start something and it grew into this. Uh, that's, you know, good, good for his ancestors, you know. And then contact, this is just Loctite. This is how I contact them through a form here. And when you contact them, then Hinkle came back to me in email. And so here's a little bit of Hinkle. You can look on Wikipedia, you know, it talks about in fiscal year of 2022, Hinkle reported sales of around 22 billion euros and an operating pro profit of 1.8 billion euros. Hinkle holds 51,950 employees with 85% working outside of Germany. I mean, they are massive. And it goes through the history, of course, the history, the history. And it, here, right here, where was it? The Loc Loctite Corporation was purchased in 1997. The purchase of the Dial Corporation was in 2004. 2008, Inkle acquired National Starch. So, I mean, they're just acquiring, acquiring, and acquiring. I think that's wrong. I think there should be some limits because this obviously creates monopolies. And no one, like, I never heard of this guy. I've never heard of this corporation. I didn't know these brands were owned by these, by this one corporation. I, so, kind of makes monopoly, right? <laughs> Um, shareholders, around 31% sh shares owned by British investors, 30% sh shares owned by American investors, followed by Germany, 7%, Canada, 7%, rest of Europe, 19%, and Asia Pacific, 5%. I'm kind of aware of the, the, uh, British ones are Christoph Henkel. The reason why I wonder that is due to the, uh, just the share share amount and what have you, but I, I don't know. I you know tried to do more research on him, and I just couldn't really figure that out exactly. Um, you can see that they're into other things, <laughs> and let's see if I can find the one that showed. Oh, uh, Hinkle North American Consumer Goods. This popped up, so I was like, well, better take a look at that because if they have something kind of separate. This mainly goes on about Armour and Dial Incorporated. So is that the Armour, like, Vienna Sausages? I'm guessing. The Greyhound Corporation purchased Armour and Company. So, see, you got the Greyhound Company. I mean, it's just so intertwined, and you're never going to boycott some of these companies. You can say, I'm not going to buy Loctite, but you're probably going to go buy Snuggle, Dial, something else. And you're, or something that they pick up and you never knew unless you're watching nonstop. 
what these companies buy. That's why boycotts to these large corporations don't really do anything. <laughs> they don't. Like, I know people are boycotting Coca-Cola because of the, you know, be less white. But at the end of the day, I drink, I'll drink Coke. I'll drink the Mexican Coke. Why? Because, well, it has cane sugar. I can't have high fructose corn syrup. And, you know, I don't know. Am I going to live my life worried about who's who? I mean, that might work for a little bit. But really, at the end of the day, let's be honest. You're going to end up buying something from one of these companies. And you could be like, well, you're making him richer. Well, I don't know how much he's a part of anything anymore, like I said. Because I don't see him listed on the board they clearly say, you know, he has nothing to do with us anymore, basically. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and apparently they had Right Guard and Dryde of deodorant brands to thriving brand. So that was in 2021. So they even had Right Guard. I, I've used Right Guard. So, you know, I recognize these products. I'm... <sighs> Am I going to worry about it? Yeah, okay, it is here. On March 1st, 2006, Dial completed the sale of its food business for $183 million to Pinnacle Foods. The food business produces self-sustaining canned meats, such as potted meats and Vienna sausages. <laughs> you can see my video on Vienna sausages. <sighs> okay. Here's Christoph Hinkle, his Wikipedia page, because he is somebody. Born, born February 11th, 1958, is a London-based German billionaire businessman and entrepreneur. As of September 2021, his net worth is estimated at $1.7 billion. So that Forbes should have been more accurate if that was a real live tracker of wealth. So he's down to $1.5 Oh, <laughs> shocks. Christoph Henkel was born in Dusseldorf, West Germany. Hinkle's grandfather, Frederick Karl Hinkle, founded Hinkle, a cleaning products company, in 1876. His father, Conrad Hinkle, took over the company and turned it into the global corporation. Christoph Hinkle was born in February 1958. Hinkle inherited a one billion pound, right, pound stake in the German chemical company Hinkle shortly after his father's death in 1999. So he's just got lucky in life. He didn't really work for it. He just got lucky. He is the co-founder and co-owner of Canyon Equity, which is the whole real estate investment with the uh, here headquarter in Larks Larkspar, California. He is also the owner of Dunton Hot Springs Resort in Dunton, Colorado. In the Sunday Times Rich List 2022 ranking of the wealthiest people in the UK, he was placed fifth with an estimated family fortune of 15 billion pounds. He ranks 1,118 on the list of the richest people in the world and 71st in Germany. He was a member of the shareholders committee of Henkel from 1991 to 2022 so he was just a member of the shareholders committee at the best probably because of namesake you know but it sounded like he got off that i was trying to find more to back this up than wikipedia but you know maybe i'm not that good at googling but i hate that this is what i came so and from what their email said it sounds like he's off it sounds like he doesn't have anything to do. And again, he might have stock, of course. But why would you boycott a company that has stock? I, I don't understand that personally. Hankel resides in London, England. He is married to uh, Ka Katrine Billinger, an art dealer and collector specializing in old master drawings. They have two sons. He received an honorary doctorate from the University of Dusseldorf in 2007. Doesn't even say where he might have went to school or anything. So I'm guessing he never did. He was just born into it and got lucky in life, like I said. <laughs> uh, this is a thing. The Trail Preservation Alliance, which I know them very well. The San Juan Trail Riders in the Public Access Preservation Association. 
versus the U.S. Forest Service, San Juan National Forest, Kara Chadwick Forest Advisor, and Derek uh, Padilla, Dol uh, Dolores Ranger District, and then the federal respondents, and Wild Earth Guardians, San Juan Citizens Alliance, Dunton Hot Springs Incorporated, Sheep Mountain Alliance. Now, this is a big legal brief document. And I'm not even going to act like I understand everything I skimmed through in this. <laughs> but this one is day because there's different ones because, you know, they refile these and what have you. Somebody posted one that was earlier than this. This one was 11 uh, November 1st, uh, 2019. Somebody else had one that was earlier in 2019. But these things, you know, they have to resubmit to the court and blah, blah, blah. And unless you understand everything in here, it, I don't know. The one thing I saw that showed, here, let me type his name. Chris, Christoph. Christoph Hankel is the president of Inter, Intervenor Respondent Petitioner Dutton Hot Springs and Associated Properties, as well as Vice Chairman of the $22 billion Global Sales Hankel. It says Vice Chairman. Nowhere did I find that he was. Well, let's assume he was. But again, it sounds like he's not anymore. This is 2019, so 22 is correct. He, he's has nothing to really do with Hankel unless he owns some stock still. Dunta includes 183 acres. Okay, that was close. I said like 175 earlier in the video. But 183 acres of private property adjacent to the forest. A luxury high-end tourist accommodation. So this kind of lays out what if you're an investor and you're developing a property, what you might be like, you know, we don't like these trails, but they might not like the trails whether it was for whatever equestrian they just might not like the trails being there which is wrong because i believe if you buy an area you should do your due diligence and look into what's in that area and if you don't like sounds of off highway vehicles whether it's jeeps atv side by sides or motorcycles dirt bikes particularly then you probably shouldn't buy there if you don't like the street bikes going up and down the road Probably shouldn't have bought there. I <laughs> think you should have done your due diligence. I do strongly believe that. But I also understand from a business standpoint that somebody's going to be like, hey, you know, I'm putting this high end place. I don't want you here. That's just the fact of life. People do that all the time, you know? And it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. But I do under I do get it. Even though I don't believe people should do that. I know I'm going to get flack for this, but whatever. Um, so you can, you know, Google this and read all this if you want. Um, I don't know whatever really came of this, if anything at all. I do understand from people posting on the comment section of Highland Cycles that a trail that bordered his property did get closed because I guess he did argue noise so they did close that trail i don't know if other trails were affected by that or not um you know he's doing a high-end resort and he's an outfitter because that talks about that in this legal document that he has a license and the for horseback riding for hiking for this and that so they can take people out on tours okay that's not too unusual and Again, it goes back to the high-end clientele. I can totally understand from a business standpoint where they're trying to say, hey, we're trying to do this where it's quiet and this and that. And if you read like Dunton's um, site, if you go here, it talks about how everything's sustainable and how they're like, oh, where was it? Wish I remember that was, but it, it talks about on the site or how they're trying to do everything sustainable and every little bit, like they recycle the paper and they do this and that. Obviously they're targeting a certain audience by wording all this stuff of <laughs> sustainability. It might've been under that 
this widely appealed concept that we that we work for to inform every aspect of our system and culture. We take cues from principles in nature and apply them to our own work. So they're really trying to push the sustainability. Here it is. All, all our Colorado properties use electricity generated by 100% renewable energy. Solar panels, wind, I don't know what they have. We make our own candles in-house. <laughs> See, the wording here is targeting a certain group of people in today's world that are like, oh, yeah, I'll go spend $2,000 on a cabin a night. Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, it's going to be so peaceful. It's going to be relaxing. There won't be paparazzi. <sighs> See, that's what they're going for. They're going for these people that are all into the yogurt, cottage cheese, and cream cheese are now being made in-house. But when you look at this, then you kind of understand, And is he anti motorcycles who the hell knows really i mean i don't know him personally probably he probably isn't it's all about business he doesn't care who he steps on and he's probably seen it his whole life i mean he's an older guy now he has seen it his whole life like if you want something you're gonna have to step on people you're gonna have to squash this group over here and you're gonna get what you want which is wrong which is wrong but I also understand it. <laughs> um, now, now the whole point of this, do you, do you boycott people on this list, companies on this list? If you, man, if I boycott companies on this list, plus companies on the other list, I hear about that. I might not agree with in other companies and other companies, who am I going to do business with? How am I going to survive in this world, this modern world we live in? I'm not going to. So, you know, I'm just going to come back to stuck nuts. I don't fault them for starting a business. I think that's awesome. I started a business here. I think that's awesome. I think they have something and we can have another player in the field that is donating money to um, causes, you know, and they do claim, let me go to the site, stucknuts.com, let's see, here's their website, so let's show that, you know, made by riders for riders, trial ag advocacy and access, Oh, tongue twister. Growing the off-road community made in the USA. You know, I think this is cool. I think this is really cool. You can go to their shop. Here's their stuff. You can get the blue, the red. Um, you can get shirts and swag and stuff. You know, I I actually applaud them because we can use another in in the community. And they also say they give. They give to the Blue Ribbon Coalition, Stay the Trail, and Trail Preservation Alliance. That's who they like to support. I shouldn't say give because it doesn't say that. But they support them, and I'm assuming in some ways they give, they advertise, they, they mention them in some ways. And it says it all began on some epic single track deep in the mountains. Frustration began to develop due to some recent trail closures not allowing us to complete our originally planned route. A member in our group mentioned how one of our competitors inv invests and supports ideas. Now, that's what I don't agree with here. Does Loctite themselves? I don't think Loctite themselves do. I don't think Loctite invest because you have a guy that at one point was probably part of the company, could still hold large sums of shares in the company, has viewpoints that doesn't mean loctite themselves has those viewpoints or has donated to closed trails what we should be saying is the dunton hot springs has supported policies and ideas 
to close local trails to benefit their private business, but not allow others to enjoy those public lands that they have paid for with their tax money. You know, something like that. That That's how it should be. It shouldn't be Loctite. Loctite has nothing to do with this. It has zero to do with this. And if you think you not buying Loctite is somehow supporting Dunton Hot Springs, he, he, by the time it trickles that little bit to the share, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, you're insignificant. We are insignificant as riders. There's not many of us anyways. Let's say 100,000 riders stop buying Loctite tomorrow. Is that going to affect the Hinkle Corporation? Is that going to affect Christoph Hinkle? Probably not. Is it going to affect Dunton Hot Springs? No, it won't. I'd rather point out that it's the Dunton Hot Springs that is actually closing down trails for others while they still use the public lands to make money. It's not like they're saying close it down for everybody, blah, 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 you know, let the animals roam free. No one uses it. I can even kind of get behind that. When they talk about wilderness, originally when I first heard the concept of wilderness, I assumed wilderness meant no one could use that section of the forest. Not that, no, 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 motorized can't use it and all that, but you can, you can hike into it. How's that wilderness? How is that being wilderness? You're still going out there. I don't get it. But, but um, yeah, it's public lands. We all should be able to use it. There was trails there that were there before his little resort. I'm going to call it 183 acres. Ain't big. You know, like I said, my parents have 245 acres in Tennessee. I know people that own much more land than that. 800 acres, 400 acres, 1,200 acres, you know, 16,000 acres. One of my mother's friends that was just telling a buddy earlier about, you know, the family owns 16, 16, 16. Yeah, they all inherited it and they kind of split it up. That's all theirs. And yeah, it, it, it's a large sum of property. Um, You know, <laughs> His 183, it's cute. It's it's a cute piece. Like I said, he shouldn't be able to close it down. And I want to support these guys. And I'm going to buy some for the shop because, like I said, they're small. They're starting out. I don't 100% agree with the, 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 the story per se. I don't think it's Loctite. But I, I would like to see these individuals uh, grow, expand. And maybe this is the next $20 million product right here that, you know, down the road, a generation or so, somebody is like, hey, we'll buy you for $50 million. And you know their kid or grandkid is going to sell it. <laughs> that is going to happen. And I would be mad at my daughter if I built this up and... You know, maybe even as she gets older, she starts kind of running the business and we've expanded and we've done a lot more and have real estate investments and this and that. And one day she doesn't take the offer when somebody comes in and goes, I'll buy everything for a hundred million dollars or whatever the, whatever it is. Why wouldn't you? Like, why do you have that? Because your dad kind of started a business with a business buddy? No. Sell it, sell it. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe they'll they're the next uh, big big thing, and that's how money is made in America. I do like that they give back to organizations. I do like that they have a different option out there for people to buy. And yeah, I mean, I guess whether you want to fall into the line of thinking like you need a boycott a company because that's going to do something. I'd rather look at this as like, I'm going to support the little guy here because little businesses are what hire, grow and really drive the economy. So I'm going to support them. They're sending me some, I'm going to try it out. 
and most likely I'm going to order, you know, some. I don't know if they have a minimum. I haven't asked about that, but I'll order a bunch in. We'll have it here at a and Moto Toys for sale. Why not? I was thinking about getting some Loctite or something to sell. I'll sell their stuff because, again, I like supporting small business. So I will support them just for that fact, just for the fact that they're riders and they started something that competes with a big company. It's good to have options. So, yeah, y'all take care, stay well, stay safe. And you decide for yourself, whatever I say or whatever people say, just realize the world is so much more complex than just saying, Christoph Henkel, you know, you got to boycott all these, all this stuff because he's given money and he's out there. He bought a, a hot springs and he's doing this and that it has nothing to do with all the companies they own. Snuggle. What's that got to do with them? What does dial have to do with the hot springs? Come on, let's be honest here. And if I try to boycott everybody, I'm not going to be drinking tea. I'm not going to be having donuts. I'm not going to be having cell phones. Come on now. Anyways, y'all take care. Stay well. Stay safe. Have a good one.